I use Luminar Neo to sort and edit hundreds of photos from my recent trip to Iceland, and I'm gonna break down what it does well, what I don't like about it, and how it compares to Lightroom to tell you whether it's worth your money. This isn't sponsored, by the way. Let's dive right into all the tools that make Luminar unique. The first thing, which is marketed super heavily, is Luminar's sky replacement tool. Personally, I really dislike sky replacements, but you know what? If you like them, then Luminar's is really good. They've got a whole category catalog of different skies to pick from, and you can even buy special packs from other users, like Northern Lights or this Minecraft-inspired one. These replacements look so good because Luminar's AI detects areas that would naturally reflect the sky and then adds reflections to them to match it. It's super impressive. It's not perfect all the time, and obviously you need to pick a sky that actually fits the rest of the photo that you're adding it to, but if this is something that you'd actually use, it's a pretty strong selling point. I don't use sky replacements because I think that they just change the fundamental quality of the image way too much. But Luminar has a great alternative tool for people like me, and it's called their Twilight Enhancer. This applies a color grade and a slight lighting shift to emulate twilight colors on the photo without replacing the whole sky. So instead of this crazy sky replacement, we can keep the natural sky and just emphasize that low light and bring in some violet color. It's looking pretty good now, but I wanna make the car stand out a bit more, so I'm gonna use another tool, and it's their relighting tool or the light depth tool. This uses AI to detect depth in your image and change the lighting in different areas of that image. If I want more light up front, I can just pull it up. Or if I want to focus more on the back, I can push the lighting all the way to the back. That right there is crazy. Can you do this with Lightroom? Eh, sort of, but it would be a ton of masking, drawing gradients, and tweaking feathering to make it look good and isolate that area. You certainly can't adjust it like this in real time. Luminar is just really good at editing light. But what if you need a lot more than just basic AI photo editing capabilities? That's where Artlist comes in. Artlist is my go-to service for everything generative AI, and they've just added a brand new video generator, Kling 01. Kling 01 brings a whole new level of control and consistency to AI video. It allows you to upload start and end frames and provides huge element control with at tag recognition. This new generator looks amazing, but Artlist doesn't just open the door to Kling. They've got a ton of other video models to choose from like VO 3.1, as well as world-class image generators like Nano Banana Pro. This is all on top of their library of generative voice models, music, sound effects, and more. With Artlist, you can generate images, animate them, and create the perfect audio all in one place. And there's no better time to do it than right now because Artlist is running their biggest sale ever, offering 40% off their annual AI plans and 20% off their all-inclusive max plans. What's even better is my link down in the description will still give you two free months on top of the sale. So if you're interested, definitely take advantage of that while you can because this sale is only running for a little while. Thank you Artlist for sponsoring this video. Now let me show you how Luminar handles one of my most used editing tools. For my landscape photos, I almost always mask certain areas that I want to look darker and other ones that I want to look lighter to increase the visual contrast of the image. With Lightroom, this takes a decent amount of time and tweaking, but Luminar's dodge and burn tool makes it insanely easy to add these adjustments. After these tools, there really weren't any others that I found particularly useful on Luminar, unfortunately. There's some that I would use like the water enhancer, color harmony, and landscape editors, but all of these effects are really easily done in Lightroom with color adjustments and masking. There's also some filters to add fog, glow, or film grain to an image, but I don't really use this kind of thing, and I think it looks a little bit gimmicky. But now that we've covered the landscape tools, let's talk about portraits. Luminar has some great tools for smoothing skin and improving overall appearance, but Lightroom can do kind of all the same stuff, plus do custom masks for editing other parts of the subject, like the hair and hands. For me, Lightroom wins here, hands down, unless you want your eyes to be big or you want to edit at other body proportions because Lightroom can't do that, but Luminar can. Portraits aren't the only thing that I think Lightroom does better though. Lightroom's AI object removal is far superior to Luminar's. I've gotten much more natural looking results from it, and it also gives you three different versions of the removal so that you can choose the best one. Luminar only provides one. You have no other options. Denoise is also a huge strong point for Lightroom. Take a look at this image of the Northern Lights. 
I shot it pretty underexposed, so after all of the lighting correction, we've got a lot of noise going on here. I ran this through Lightroom's noise reduction as well as Luminar's, and Lightroom took Luminar to school. Honestly, I wouldn't even consider Luminar's usable. It was just so messy, and I spent a long time tweaking it to get the best result possible out of it. So trust me, this is the best result. The Lightroom edited image, on the other hand, looks incredible, and I hardly did any tweaking to this at all. The AI is just that much better. Lightroom's also got more advanced and professional core editing features like their tone curve, color mixer, and color grading tools, which are notably absent from Luminar. So this leaves us in a weird place because Luminar has some tools that are absolutely awesome, but two of the most important AI features are so much better in Lightroom, and Lightroom is far better for pro color correction. That said, there's one more really important category that you need to consider, which is workflow. The first step in editing photos is culling hundreds or thousands of bad shots to find the ones that you actually want to edit. Luminar falls short of Lightroom for a couple of really simple reasons, speed and organization. Lightroom's cloud library allows you to upload all of your images to the application and organize them in files and albums inside of Lightroom itself. Luminar, on the other hand, uses local file routing as the primary folder and organization system. Here's how this affects file management. When you're flipping through photos, you'll notice that whatever software you use will take a split second to load the full resolution version of an image. Luminar takes noticeably longer to load a full resolution image than Lightroom, usually sitting at about 1.15 seconds, where Lightroom is usually around half a second. Now I know it's like half a second difference, but if you're flipping through hundreds or thousands of images, the full resolution image needs to be available almost instantaneously. And this problem isn't contained just to the loading of images. Overall, Luminar is just much slower. Copying and pasting edits across images takes way longer, and exporting takes about twice as long as it does on Lightroom. Other little things, I just like Lightroom's style better. It's got photo thumbnails for albums, and it's easy to organize them by dragging and dropping folders into different albums, and Luminar is just pretty basic. Lightroom also has a new assisted culling feature that Luminar hasn't implemented yet. So where does this leave Luminar Neo? Well, let's take a look at the value. Adobe Lightroom costs $12 a month right now, and this is a subscription. So as long as you want to keep using the software, you have to keep paying every month. Luminar, on the other hand, charges a one-time license fee, which is typically $477 if you want the mobile app included. However, they're running a huge Black Friday sale right now, so it's much cheaper. Luminar's pricing is just kind of weird. They run a lot of seasonal deals, so just check out the link below. It'll have whatever sale they're running right now. Right now. now their one-time license fee can be great because it means you won't have to keep paying just to use a software every single month and you won't risk price increases on that monthly payment but $477 gets you like over three years worth of Lightroom so there's a pretty big one-time commitment there in the end I think it comes down to mostly what you're shooting and what level of photography you're doing Luminar is awesome for landscape photography there is nothing that Lightroom can do that Luminar can't in this realm, and Luminar has a ton of extra features that play really well with landscapes. If you're more of a portrait or mixed photography person, then I think Lightroom is the way to go. It's just more professional and it has a better core set of features. And of course, if you have the budget, you could just get both and integrate Luminar into Lightroom Classic with their plugin. Now, if you wanna save money on Luminar, I have a link and a discount code down in the description. And if you wanna check out my favorite video editing tools, you can watch this video right up over here.